Hi and welcome back. Now that we have the Agilent 33622A waveform generator unboxed, it's time to have a look at first impressions. So this is a um, nice clear shot of the front panel. I haven't powered it up yet. And uh, as you can see, there is uh, plenty of controls to play with. If I zoom in, we'll just take a tour across the front panel. So let's start from the left hand side. As you can see, we have a USB port for connecting to um, a memory stick allowing us to plug in waveforms or to save settings out to an external port from what I understand. Um, going across we have a power button on the bottom left hand corner so I've got the power plugged in so a little standby light showing there and um, along the bottom we have a series of custom function keys that can be used for different um, settings as you go through the various functionality of the generator. Um, to the right of the screen we have uh, a series of selectable capabilities for the waveform generator. If you start at the top, um, waveforms which will allow you to select what kind of waveform you want to deal with, whether it's a sine wave, a square wave, triangle wave, or an arbitrary waveform. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. Underneath that we have the parameters button which I'm assuming will allow us to vary things like frequency, amplitude, pulse width um, and many many other parameters. Uh, units um, is to decide whether you want to have it in uh, frequency or in uh, period or various other settings so I haven't investigated that too much yet we'll have a look as we go through. Modulate the waveform generator is capable of doing amplitude and frequency based modulation as well as having an external um, input to modulate the signal. Uh, sweep allows you to sweep um, the frequency or an amplitude based on an external or an internal control signal. Um, burst, if you've ever played with signal generators and things before, allows you to do short bursts of a signal. So if, for example, it was a square wave, you could tell it just to do, um, say, three cycles every second. So it allows you to um, do just a quick burst of a signal. Uh, you could use this for all sorts of different testing purposes. Uh, system at the bottom, we'll have a look at that in a moment. I'm assuming it allows you to um, set up IP address for the ex external ray connectors, uh, maybe change language and a few other things. So we'll go through that in a moment. Um, going up further to the right, we have the um, data entry keys. I'll just zoom out a little bit here. And uh, you can see standard 1 to 9 and 0, a decimal point and a plus and minus. Uh, and then to the right of that we have the um, pretty classic rotational dial, which um, I can see here it's got a nice clicky feel to it. Um, fairly solid click between each uh, rotation. Um, it does not have a push or pull functionality on it so there's no additional enter functionality or anything like that. And we have um, what I can only assume to be left and right arrow keys. Uh, okay now down to the bottom we have the uh, three BNC connectors um, which the first one is labeled sync the, and then the next two, because it's a two-channel generator, um, contain the output 1 and output 2 BNCs. Um, underneath that, if I just lift it, it's a bit of a reflection from the lights here. If I just drop that down, maybe you can see a bit better. Yeah, um, You can have up to uh, 50 ohm load, and I'm assuming from the quick glance I had in the glossies, you can actually have a high impedance output um, and presumably some different impedance loads and things or source impedance from the waveform generator. Um, the other thing that you can see there is a trigger button um, so we'll have a little investigation of what that's going to do as we go through the review. Um, I'm assuming that probably manually triggering things like burst outputs or um, the generator I believe has the ability to uh, run sequences of waveforms that you can join together so when we get through looking at the software and how you configure additional waveforms we'll investigate that functionality a little bit further. 
So anyway, let me just zoom out here and we'll power this thing up. Okay, so let's just time this thing to see how long it actually takes to um, power up. I'm just going to count it in my head. I guess it doesn't matter if we're not 100% accurate. So here we go. One, two, three, a little bit noisy, five. So just under 30 seconds, so let's just call that 30 seconds from powering up to being ready to what appears to start uh, start being used, which is not, not bad considering the device we've got here. 